Again, disclaimer, you're beautiful. You look I'm beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm a physical therapist, um, not a psychologist. Um, but that being said, we're going to talk a lot about just dealing with chronic pain. Um, this Today's topic was supposed to be uh, graded exposure, but kind of what it morphed into is both graded exposure and kind of how to talk to your family about what's going on with you and kind of how to make them, help them understand what's going on with you. Um, so the first handout that I have is but you don't is from ButYouDon'tLookSick.com and it's called The Spoon Theory. Um, if you Google The Spoon Theory, you can find it pretty much anywhere. Uh, are, is everybody familiar with The Spoon Theory at this point? Okay. Um, now that I read it, it sounds like... Yeah, it's, I mean, the, 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 this, this here, the spoon theory, is just basically a lady that was trying to explain to her friend what it's like to have lupus. Um, and while we don't, many of us don't have lupus, we, we have a chronic illness, which is, is very similar. And the idea behind the spoon theory is to explain that you have limited amounts of energy. You have these little packets of energy and you have a limited amount throughout your day because of the pain or the chronic illness. And so you have to budget what you do based on how much energy you have, okay? And so that's, that's the story um, that I, I gave you guys, okay, as far as the, and it, it does make a lot of sense if you want to um, hand this to your family members or even re read through it, it kind of helps to validate what you're going through. Uh, what I found was um, from mollysfund.org uh, is, is kind of a neat little way to kind of look at your own spoons or your own energy needs throughout your day. Um, they had a, an example. They had an example filled out online and I just kind of took the thing and, and got rid of all the, all the pictures. But like, for example, getting out of bed, one spoon. Takes one spoon of energy. Um, calling parents or getting dressed, another spoon, okay? Um, and you have about 15 per day. Um, that's kind of an arbitrary number, but you know, that's, it's, it's a good starting place. Um, taking a shower, uh, two spoons. Organizing your medication or managing that, takes another two spoons. Um, going to a doctor's appointment. They put down three spoons, I say four. Five, or five, <laughs> yeah. Depending on your doctor. Socializing, three spoons. I say four. That's fifteen. Fifteen at <laughs> least. <laughs> yeah. Doctor <Not> Steve. <laughs> <laughs> there was a great thing on on uh, on Facebook the other day. I posted it to my wall. It was uh, it was pretending to be an, a nice person all day is exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's good. Um, but basically just kind of ideas on what kinds of activities can take energy for you. So I give you a blank one that you can kind of look at as far as, you know, what you do during your day that takes your energy. Um, I put get up, I'm eating a meal when I was sick, eating a meal was at least one spoon. Um, but preparing that same meal was two. So preparing the meal and eating it was at least three spoons. So you do that three times. There's nine spoons out of your 15. Getting up out of bed and taking a shower <laughs> and getting dressed, you know, um, and then you're, you're basically, you're out of luck if you're gonna do a load of laundry or if you're gonna go socialize, you're gonna see a doctor's appointment, going to grocery shopping. I separated out, I think on the, on the, the one that, that they filled out, they put grocery shopping with oh, four spoons. I put four spoons, but then actually, um, unloading the you know unloading the groceries was another two because to me getting them from the car into the house and then into the cupboards was a really big deal too that's Not just huge. just getting into the you know just going so that's huge. so that being said that, that this kind of gives you an idea of what it is that you are doing throughout your day that's causing that's taking your energy um, and kind of helps you to but to budget also helps you to explain to somebody I can't go socialize because I went to the grocery store today you they know? don't buy it, though. No, <laughs> they, they don't understand. My, that's that's they don't. where the laziness came in with my neighbor. They yeah. don't understand. Yeah, yeah, and and that's and, and you know this and is. And they don't try to understand. They have no reference. They don't. Mm -mm. It's like she said, in order for them to understand, they have to go through what we've been through. Yeah, they have to go through it, and I I always have to stop myself and say, but I'm glad they're not going through it 
because you really wouldn't wish it on anybody. It's frustrating that they don't understand, but at the same time, you want you don't want your family to be suffering the same way you are. That experience, what I went through, though. Um, so, well, that being know, said, I think a few <laughs> maybe you're right. There's a few that actually yes. <laughs> maybe you're right. Um, okay, so the so the next thing we're I was talking about pacing um, is kind of another way to look at the spoon theory and how much energy you have, and this pacing is um, kind of how to get through your days without what I call the boom bust cycle. So you know, we all know what it's like to do too much in one day and then you pay for it for three days afterwards. So I call that your boom, you feel okay one day, go ahead and clean the whole house, and then you're, you're stuck for another week trying to recover from that. Um, so this pacing is to try to get ourselves and our lives organized to a point where we're not doing that boom bust where we're doing the same amounts, whether you feel good or not, throughout every day. That's probably my toughest thing. It is the hardest thing, because we're not lazy people. Because you people. can't predict you know, what you're going to run into, even if you go to the grocery store. Some, the some old lady might good. try to run yeah. over. Yeah, it takes a lot of planning, a lot of forethought where you're talking, a lot of planning It does, it does so take I, a lot I of planning I do a lot of kidding. So that's yes, that's okay. <laughs> if, I'm not, if I'm not picking on somebody, it's usually Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so the so the idea is is and just to keep in mind that when you're healthy, we have a really high tissue tolerance level, meaning that we can do a lot without doing damage to our tissues. Okay, whether it's our you know muscles or joints or whatever, we can do a whole lot. Um, there is a thing called the SAID principle. The SAID principle stands for, it's S-S-A-I-D. Stands, stands for uh, Specific Adaptations to Imposed Demands. And that's on this page here, okay? Um, basically what that means is that your body is going to change and make improvements based on, the, on what demands you put on it. Um, and athletes use this all the time. They don't get off the couch and go run a marathon. They train for it. Okay, uh, people that do bodybuilding don't just go and pick up the heaviest weight. They they work up to that, and so the body is making those adaptations based on the demands of the weightlifting or the running or whatever. Okay, um, and this is when when you're healthy, you have a really high tissue tolerance level, and when you push into that, yeah, you get sore muscles. You know, you, you start to, you, you feel it, okay? What happens when you're not healthy and you have a chronic illness is that you have a different kind of pain when you start to push into that tissue tolerance level, but you also have a flare-up line where your body is, by protection, going to flare up and say, whoa, put on the brakes, stop, where you need to stop and rest. The last time we did this, <laughs> you were out for however long, whether it's, you know, an accident that happened that, that you were out for a couple of years or whatever it may be, okay? Or the last time you flared up, you were down for a week. Does that make some sense as far as, okay. So where you're at now, the tissues have not been being used the way they used to, okay? You're not as active as you used to be. And so you're not as strong as you used to be, whether it's your muscle, muscular strength or your endurance, your cardiovascular health, any kind, all of your tissues are not as strong as you used to be because you just can't move as much, okay? So the, this whole graded exposure is a way to try to get you from where you're at now, which is not very healthy, plus having a chronic illness, and into more activity, more better health, and a better quality of life because you have more endurance and can do more things and you have more spoons. Okay, so um, we have on the back of this this pacing, we have, um, this is all from, from uh, the Explain Pain book by Lerner Mosley, uh, which is a fabulous book if you can get your library to get it. Um, I would recommend buying it except it's a little expensive. Um, what is it? It's called Explain Pain, and it's by Lorimer Mosley. There's there's an ebook. I think that's thirty five dollars. The actual book itself is eighty. 
or at least it was the last time I looked. So yeah, it's more of a textbook price, yeah. but um, but they have said that they don't mind us using the material for education purposes. <laughs> so anyway, thank you, um, yes, thank you, Lorimer. Uh, and if you look up Lorimer mostly on YouTube, he's awesome. He's really funny, and he does a lot of good explaining um, of how pain works. But basically, what this what this this graph shows is that when you are very ill and you have um, chronic illness, you your body has this protection flare-up line where it tries to prevent you from going into tissue damage by really setting, putting on the brakes, flaring up the pain and getting you to stop, okay? Um, what we want to do is fly under that radar. That's fine. <laughs> um, what we want to do is fly under that radar, but we want to gradually increase the amount of activity that you're doing every day to where you're pushing that flare-up line up with you as you go, okay? All right, so how do you do this? Baby steps. Baby, baby steps. I'm a big fan of baby steps. Um, and, and when I say baby steps, I, I actually was kind of thinking about this the other day. I'm thinking one spoon or maybe a half a spoon. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So... Um, think of something that will take about as much energy as getting out of bed, like walking down the block, and or halfway down the block and back, um, and cut it in half. But do it every single day, whether you feel like crud or not. Okay. Um, so it should be something that is pretty rough on a. I mean, it, it's a little bit hard to do on a bad day. But it's something that's really very doable and very easy on a good day. Okay. So you, the idea is then you do that for two weeks. Get to the point where it's not so bad on a bad day. Like, okay, I can, I can tolerate doing this on a bad day. Bump it up a little bit. Maybe another half a spoon. Okay. Does that make sense? So when you originally pick it, do you pick something you know you can do, or do you pick something a little beyond and then do half of it? Or do you pick mm, something but, kind of you know uh, you can do? I tried to pick something that would be a little bit of a challenge, but I, I'm certain I should be able to do it. But at the same time, if, if, if you feel like this may be a little much for me, I back off. I stop. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah. 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 goes back to that reward and regret that you talked about. Yeah. yeah. So if you can do it that day, good. But it. if you don't, do at least half of it. I would say yes. Sort of like, yes. Okay. Try to do a little bit. Now, the, the whole thing is, too, is that I, I encourage people, have at least one day a week where you can refuse. Okay, you have to feed that inner two-year-old that's throwing temper tantrums <laughs> because you're sick. You ha have at least one day where you're like, you know what? That's to heck with this. I I need to rest today. That's okay. it, and that's hard for me. This busy world, especially when you start trying. I don't care if you retire. I told someone the other day, I'm not retired. Those are the busiest people I know. Supposed to be the 99 <laughs> when I retired. Yeah. I'm not retired. <laughs> My dad says he can't figure out how in the world he ever had time to work. <laughs> because he said, My parents are so, you have to actually call and make time. You have to, they have to put you in their book. <laughs> That's it's, hilarious. Yeah. I think they're, like, they're used to doing something all the time. And yeah. Now they got free time, so they filled it up. Yeah. With doing it filled up quick. Good. Yeah. <laughs> that, that and doctor's appointments, they tend to increase. <laughs> that's that's really, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, the, the whole the whole idea then behind the spoon theory and behind the pacing is to, to pick something and, and to me I first thing it may mean that you really really want to be able to clean your house in a day. Okay, that's fine. You can work on that, but is that fun? First thing you pick should pick should be something fun. Okay. I don't even think about that. Or I know I don't either. <laughs> But the, the, whole, the whole thing is, you know, pick something fun. Like if you want to be able to go dancing, then, then maybe 
you know, start by doing some physical exercise like walking or, you know, dance to a half a song on the radio or, you know, whatever it may be that you choose to do. Pick something that's, that's halfway fun um, so that you feel like you're getting a, a, a nice reward for right. Okay. I go to yoga three times a week. That's great. That's yeah, fabulous. That that's really good. <laughs> yeah. It does. It does. It does. It's um it easy. No, it's not easy. <laughs> well now we don't uh, the class I go to, we don't get down on the floor. It's all done in standing and sitting a combination of mm -hmm. it and that. But um, I want to, you know, improve my balance. Yeah, that's thing. great. And strength. These are strengthening ones, I guess, is what this one is that I do. Yeah. yeah, but you're still you're still moving your body. I mean, yes, that's, that's huge. And that was yeah. that when I first started all of this, my whole goal was to move my body at least once a day and go through my whole range of motion. And yeah. so it was it was just a matter of you know one, <laughs> you know, you know to maybe do a like, a, you know, pulling my knees up. I couldn't do a squat at that point um, you know just to try to move the body once a day and that was about all I could tolerate um, so you know and then and then you all have heard about my, my walking story I go, would go to Forest Park Nature Center get out of my car walk up to the building turn around and walk back and that was my walk <laughs> yes Okay. I don't think I heard that one. <laughs> That's pretty good. That yeah. was my walk, and it took you know a half a minute or you know thirty seconds to a minute to do that walk. But that was enough for that day. I would come back a day and a half or two days later, three days later maybe, and do it again until I could do that without feeling like I was going to collapse. And then I walk around in the back of the building <laughs> and then back, add another thirty feet or fifty feet. And so baby, when you say baby steps. It really means baby steps, and let me tell you, it's very frustrating because to begin yes. with, you feel like you're not doing anything at all. You're, not you're like, this is so mine, silly. Last summer, mine was to, my son mows my yard now, even. Uh -huh. I bought this nice mower, and you can't buy anything any more expensive, I didn't think, to make it easier. Mm -hmm. It's self-propelled and it's got swivel front wheels and, and and to make everything easy, I don't even have to. Right. Right. Got, got yeah, reverse. I I got about half the front yard mode, and I can tell you that half of my front yard would be about half of this room. Uh huh. And I turned, and and it was taking itself on, and I went flat on my face. My legs wouldn't keep up. Uh -huh. and, and and I've been that's way I have been more, but my legs were just gone, mm -hmm. and it was no use. <laughs> so I tried it a couple of other times, and I couldn't gain enough to, yeah. to do the whole yard. So do two stripes and then let your son finish it. That's what I pretty much. Yeah. That's what trade that in for one of broken bones. Yeah. Yeah. Sit on the porch, drink a beer. <laughs> I, Twelve ounce curls that'll work, right? I, I can't That's drink exercise. a beer <laughs> anymore. You can sneak a goat out. <laughs> there you go. Sneak a goat if out. I drink enough beer, I won't need a <laughs> problem solved. <laughs> That's what we're about. It's all ground. <laughs> out of the box, thank you. <laughs> there you go. Full pack box. But I, I do things that I don't have to rely on my legs quite as much. Mm -hmm. So I, I set up a, kind of a list in my head when I wake up in the morning, unfortunately, 5 o'clock in the morning. That's it for me. I, I just have to. But I think it through what I plan on doing for the day. It hardly ever works out that way. Yeah, I don't think anybody ever does that. Do I think no, anybody they never ever work out? No. no. Does the plan ever come together? I don't think no, so. No, but at least I, I, yeah. I get some of that stuff done. Yeah. I need her yoga class. Just yeah. any class. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Well, balance is one of those things where if you don't use it, you lose it. So, um, And if you're not using your body, you're going to forget where your feet are. And I mean, you're, you're again, with that, 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 
um, specific adaptations to impose demands works the other way too. If you don't use your body parts and your, you know, the, the muscles start to atrophy and the nerves don't conduct quite as well and, you know, so you, you don't use quite I mean, you well, don't just coordination feel it. in general. Coordination goes down, yeah, because you're just you're not using that. The less you do, the less you want it. Yes, nerve damage reversible. To a certain extent, sure yes, yes. Um, there's there's been a lot of uh, a lot of debate about that. Okay, for a long, long time, we were told and believed that the nervous system really didn't change that what you were born with was what you were stuck with. And if you got an injury at some point along the line, whether it was, you know, in your in your arms, in your periphery, or in your brain, um, that that damage was was kind of, that, that was permanent. Um, but we are learning that the, the, the nervous system is, is as plastic as, as, your, as your muscle are. And, we can make a lot of really good changes. They've done, they've done a lot of studies where they've taken people who have had strokes 40 years ago who have never, haven't been able to use half of their body and train them how to use the other half of their body. Really? And so you think, you know, after 40 years, this would be, you know, really embedded and it would really be permanent. Cement, yeah. But it's not. It's, um, is it just from doing like muscle motion over and over again? Partly it's it's them working those muscles, partly it's not allowing them to use the side of their body that they can use. Oh, so it's like it's forcing brain them, the brain has forced them to rewire. So is it, you know, is, is the damage reversible in terms of does it, is, is it ever like go away completely? No, no, that you're, you're always going to retain the scars of whatever damage you've had, but you can get to a point where it's it's at least healed um, and doing better. Um, so yeah, I mean yes and no. That's a typical woman question to answer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is more of a man answer. I was going to say I've heard a lot of men give that answer too. So <laughs> call it a lawyer answer. How's that? Answer? There you go. That's it. It depends. So yeah, that's that's. Um, but the body is is amazingly, including the nervous system, is included incredibly plastic. It really can change um, based on what you do with it. Well, that's good news. Yeah. I got one of those radio frequency burns. Oh, did you? Uh, mm -hmm. It's been about two and a half minutes ago. Uh huh. How is that doing? I haven't decided yet with that situation mm -hmm. too. So. Uh, so how is the pain that they did the, to alleviate? Most of the pain is gone now, but I understand there's a possibility it can regenerate. Yeah. yeah. One of the things, yeah, one of the things with, with how pain works, and, and we know this much better now um, than we used to, it's not so simple as if you cut off the source of the, of, of the signal to the brain that the pain will go away. Um, there's a whole lot more involved in how pain works. Um, so again, you have the, the neighbors in the area that, that may start to pick up on um, reporting, you know, yeah. reporting whatever problems, problems may be occurring. Um, and then possible dangers that are in the neighborhood. And then the brain also is, has been processing this possible danger zone for, for years and years. And yeah. so um, there's that issue of those tracks in the brain are still functioning right. well so as like well. Shadow pains. It, yes, it is. It is like the the phantom pains. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, the, that's where we talk about retraining the brain and how um, you know using the right left discrimination. We had talked about that and, and probably will revisit that sometime. Um, there are different ways to retrain the brain, and one of the ways is by doing some graded exposure. And what we're doing, you know, with trying to increase your activity, is you're reteaching your brain that this level of activity really is safe and it's really okay. And so you may be sore, but hopefully you're not flared up, and your brain has figured out, okay, well, we didn't flare up, so we're still okay, you know. And you can increase the amount of activity that you can tolerate, and that your brain is not gonna flip out and say, whoa, stop, last time we did this, we were down for a week, or we were down for two years, 
or we had to quit our job or whatever whatever the last consequences to a major injury or illness was and I think a lot of it, it is that you have to plan like Mother's Day took me out for three days just the cleaning and the cooking and the you know you go shop it's I was out for three days, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I was, I was blown out. But that's a you gotta prepare. Mm -hmm. But you can't clean, you know, a week ahead. Your <laughs> kids, you gotta do it that you gotta day. Do it that yeah. day. Yeah. I've got a bad thing I'm trying to overcome, and that is, you know, if I can, but I keep trying. If I know it's going to take me out, I won't do it. Even though it needs well, to yeah. be done, yeah. it's something that needs to be done or whatever. No, I and, say no to a lot of things. And, uh, yeah, don't be afraid to say no. Yeah. I don't. You have to be I'm afraid. not the type that gets depressed, but if if I would let myself, that would do it to right. me. Right. So <laughs> what sure. I do is, uh, I think Steve heard me say, I get angry, mm -hmm. and I get mad at myself <laughs> okay. and or whatever yeah, and I, not at any one well, of course not it's the it's situation. situation yeah now if it was the neighbor it might be a <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how, do, do those things get done at all I mean like do you hire them out or do you have family that helps you with those my, things my son uh, does most of the yard okay and uh, the things that I can pace myself on and mm -hmm. get done, mm -hmm. uh, if I wasn't so tired and beat right now, when I went up, when I go home, I would go out in the garage and finish up a little project that right. I had started that would have, should have gotten done this morning. But uh, uh, I make myself do everything I possibly can. As much of a mental battle yeah. as it is physical. It is. Yeah. It you really, can't do really is. What you used to do, it bothers you. Absolutely. And if you can get past that, you know, Where? I had to sit for so long and so did absolutely nothing, and that was that was rough on me, yeah. uh, physically and mentally. Mm -hmm. But I can look back six months from today and see just improvement there right. compared to a year ago, and it's like, wow, who'd ever think I'd be doing what I'm doing? I didn't. No, no. When I met you six months ago, or you know, what, however long ago it was, I, I was would minimal. not. Have, yeah, it was. It was minimal. So it, I mean, it does. You know, and when I say, you, you know, have to be patient, things, not, things like not. things like do two <laughs> passes with the mower, and then every time your son comes over to do the mowing, that can right. help. And it, even if it's not the fact that you're actually mowing the whole lawn, it's that if you needed to, you could then. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you, you know, doing more cleaning f throughout the week means then that if you have to clean the whole house in one day, you can and it won't take you out for three days. <laughs> right? So, I mean, that's the whole idea is to get you to a point where the things that you want to be able to do, even if they only occur once or twice a year, those things that you want to be able to do, you can without having to worry too much about than flaring up and being in that bust cycle. My garden was getting too much for me. It's as big as this room all the way. And I found something on YouTube that said to apply a 10 minute rule. Uh -huh. every, every day spend 10 minutes pulling weeds. Okay. And That's a good pretty idea. soon your garden won't have any weeds. Yeah. So well, and you, you know. You get a lot done in 10 minutes. You, you, you really can. Um, and, that's, and that's one of the things that I have tried to do too, as far as the house goes. <laughs> Hello just there, 10 minutes there. every day of course mm -hmm. that's you know a habit that is really easy to drop after yeah, you, know, you do it for like two months and then you don't do it for a couple of days and you're like ah, you're totally like it doesn't even enter your mind you're like after that, oh, a couple good weeks later you're like wait a minute didn't i used to do that yeah. <laughs> why are good habits so hard to like bad habits are really hard to break and good habits I was going to say a while ago, uh, I, I would clean the floors if, if I could get all my stacks of paper all over the house picked up and <laughs> yeah. 
I hear you. <laughs> I think I, I have a few of those myself. myself. <laughs> I'm like, well, if you want to do this, you got to actually do this first, Amy. Yeah. You better, you know, if you want to have do some. But I'm like, wait a minute. First, do that. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. It just kind of. I bribe, I bribe myself up. Oh, I do a lot of bribing. I'm I have several bribes a day. The oh. cognitive stuff, I probably have more problems with yeah. than physical. Yeah. I got some filing to do on that, but. There's so always filing. I was going to yeah. say, I think I have about four years worth of filing. <laughs> <laughs> always filing. My problem I is need to find it. It's at the bottom of the stack. You know, here <laughs> was it. Uh, yeah. You, you know which stack and, and approximately where it is in the stack, at least. I tried to file stuff, and the next thing you know, I'm cross filing, you know, and I don't know where anything is. And, if you leave it long enough, it no longer even matters. Like, that's a, that's <laughs> if you leave it for years, most of it just becomes food. If you don't even need it, you throw most of it away. But they keep adding stuff. <laughs> There's that pile. Yeah, and then the pile gets higher and higher. The pile that matters, and then yeah, that's just it. I, I make myself just do it. You know, sometimes. I got some, like I said, needs done right now. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I just, like I said, I have about four years worth, I think. Wow. <laughs> That'd be so enough. Yeah. I just did my four years worth, and most of it didn't matter anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, but the problem is you, you can't just, you can't stuff, just pick, a, pick a date, you know, line, and then go and throw everything out that's underneath that, because yeah. you know there's like no, one there's or like two things. No, there's like one or two things. <laughs> the title to your car is in there somewhere. Titles, yes. <laughs> 